so glad you could join me on my show today. And um, I have a really special guest here. She's from um, Minnetonka area, West Hennepin, actually. And uh, she has a, a program. They have a program that's very important for you all to hear. Of course, you know, I, I'm on a journey and a mission. My mission is to help other women and, and help people survive the abuse of violence to women and uh, trafficking of women and all the above. And I have um, Judy Nelson here. She's from the Sojourner you said it organization. Right. Yeah, you got it right. And, 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 this, <laughs> and this is Judy. <laughs> Thank you. It's very nice to be here. Thank you for inviting me. This is a very important subject. Yes. It's a subject that uh, really affects so many people in um, globally, really, right. but um, certainly in this country and in this state. And um, we are an agency, Sojourner Project. Um, we are located in Minnetonka, which is the West Hennepin area. Uh, we provide um, services to battered women and their children. We are an organization that is committed to that mission. And so we provide those services in a number of ways. We are probably best known for our shelter services, um, sheltered for battered yeah. women. Okay. And I think people generally know that when women and children are not safe in their homes, they can call our, um, our hotline. We have a 24 hour. Well, we have a 24-hour hotline um, that they can call. That number, by the way, is 952-933-7422. Um, it is a 24-hour number, so you can call at 2 in the afternoon, 2 in the morning, Sunday, Saturday, Christmas Day, and, and, and a, a, a person, important. a real person, a real, gonna a real woman will answer the Yay. phone and give you information, give you support, and, um, and let you know about shelter if that is what your need is. Um, wow. Women and kids come to the shelter with sometimes the clothes on their backs, okay. and yeah. while they are there, we provide everything that they need. So oh. food, clothing, medicine, um, diapers, formula, all those things, whatever oh a woman gosh. and her children need is provided when they come to the shelter. Um, women also come to the shelter with um, goals goals to be safe. Right. And so um, as soon as they come to the shelter, they are assigned to an advocate and the advocate helps them work on, their, on those goals. And finding safety sometimes involves um, finding another place to live, sometimes getting an order for protection, um, sometimes right. it's something that involves their children, custody, visitation, those types of things. Wow. Sometimes they need restraining orders um, or protective orders. And so we can help them with all those different things through the shelter services. So you have uh, you have inter you do a, like intervention. Um, um, intervention is another service that we have in addition to the shelter. Um, it's important to know that our services are for women in the community, not just women who are in the shelter. Um, most women, wow, actually, really? those shelters are life-saving. They're important. The majority of battered women do not go to shelters. They stay in their homes and try to be safe. They try to find community resources that will help them and their children be safe. And so um, we have intervention services. Okay. We do intervention um, in coordination with the police departments of our areas in West Hennepin. So the Mound Police, the Hopkins Police, the Minnetonka Police, Deep Haven, a number of their nine different police departments that we work with. And when they go to a domestic call, when they are clearing the call, um, when they're leaving, they call the shelter, the shelter page is an advocate, and the advocate phones the victim. So usually somebody's arrested, sure. and you know, nine and a half times out of ten, someone's arrested. So the, vic the victim gets a call from the advocate um, to give her information. Usually, you know, somebody in your yeah. family has just been arrested. You've got questions. Right. And oftentimes the question is, how can I stop this? I right. didn't know he was going to be arrested. How do I, you know, yeah. what happens? Right. So we can give them information and support and let them know what's going to be happening happening and, um, and and answer their questions about the criminal justice right. system. And then whether we continue, maybe the woman says, you know, no, no, that's fine. I don't want to work with you. Right. That's okay, too. That's right. up to her. That's it's a service that's optional for her. But whether we're working with her or not, we follow the every case, every Good. one of the domestic cases that comes through wow. those police departments. We follow from the first appearance through probation, through, through the oh, end. So that if at some point she does get interested and say what's going on yeah. she can call us and we know exactly what's going on with every case and oh, we can let her know fabulous. and keep her informed 
And wow. so that's intervention. That's, wow. But that's we also great. have community resources oh, wow. um, for women in the community who are not involved in the criminal justice system. For women who are in civil court, for instance, they have custody issues, they have divorce questions, they have um, problems with visitation, with housing. Um, we can help them with, with, with all those areas of, yes, with all those areas of well, civil court. We also have, <laughs> as I'm going on, no, we also have um, support groups um, for women, oh. which is a very transformative process. Um, I've been doing this work for over 25 years, and support groups are Bless one of heart. the most wonderful areas of working with women that I can think of. They really help women get long-term support that can go on for years because abuse can go on for years. Go and on for years. I mean, it's over when he says it's over, let's face it. Yeah, let's and face um, it. and you, she can keep calling the police and keep going to court, but right. she continues to need support while yes. she is going through these things. And then maybe he's gonna sue her for custody or maybe he's, right. you, you know, know, maybe there are problems with child support. All those things right. we can help women with. Wow, and um, but the support group is really helpful in getting women connected with other women, women who are not going to ask her crazy questions like, yeah. what's wrong with you? Yeah, Why are right. you staying with him? <laughs> um, the women in that group understand the dynamics of abuse and how manipulative and how oh, ins in, insinuating this, the situation yeah, how is and how, how insidious the situation yes. is and how much of a, of a spider web the woman oh, is involved oh. with and that it really takes help and support support and um, a lot of skilled people around her to get her freed from that and oh. to get her into a position where she can wow. keep her kids and herself safe. That is so fabulous. So those you... are the, the wow. services that we provide. And I it's important for this. people to know that Sojourner provides services to women in the West Hennepin area. Um, but there is Home Free, which provides, uh, which provides identical services in the North areas. Um, uh, like um, uh, Maple Grove and right. Plymouth, and mm -hmm. those those areas oh. are served by by Home Free. There are um, services in um, in St. Paul, um, such as Women's Advocates, which is um, is right. here. There are a number of so of um, shelters and community services all over the metro area. And that the problem is that nobody knows about it. Uh, right, Judy. right. Nobody and in fact, all over the state here. and all over the country yeah, there the, are nobody knows about it. nobody right i wish to god i wish to god some of you news people out there in abc or cbs or cnn would start <laughs> talking about this and telling women where to get help i'm that's my camera <laughs> yeah yeah no, that's yours no and 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 help get this out this this message out there we're talking about it at a small little cable station here in, in White Bear Lake, Minnesota. This should be being aired all over the state of Minnesota. There should not be just us talking. They, they, these people, Sojourner organization, should be talked about at least once a week on major stations. One of the other issues and that's, people know they have that's, help. that's emerging in Minnesota, which is, is a fairly new, well, in the last 10 years, a fairly new area of our work is immigration, working oh, with oh, yeah. immigrant and oh, refugee oh, women. Yeah. Um, there They're are them in here. The, the only place in, um, in the world where there are more Somalis right. than Minnesota yes. is Somalia. Yes, it is. <laughs> we have a huge yes. um, Somalian population. I know we do. Um, and these people come from a very different culture. Oh, yeah. And they... they and women need support. They need to know what their rights are. They, they need to know no that things idea are different. That they here. have any rights. Um, men and women both need to be um, uh, educated about women's rights in this country and what their rights are. Right. And there are a lot of services for um, for immigrants oh, in this in this country and in this well, I know, yeah, in our in okay. our agencies. Um, Did you hear about that either? No, but we um, we do have um, interpreters who help us, and we do have immigration services that help That's us great. because um, very often um, immigrant and refugee um, battered women have issues that are specific right. and unique to them, and they need um, they need to be able to access services that oh, can help them. Yes. Um, women who are here married to U.S. citizens right. um, can, for instance, apply for their they can self petition, oh, um, so they are. No longer dependent on their U.S. Um, spouse um, to 
um, to to get those those um, oh, you're papers kidding. for them. They can they can self petition. Yeah, there are U visas. There are a number of services that immigrant and refugee battered women can access. Wow. And most shelters have access to those resources. And most advocates um, are are informed and know about those those things well, too. Well, how do you get in touch with them? You know, people? one of the strengths of the battered women's movement and of the shelter movement in general is that um, there are a lot of resources that are all interconnected. Okay. Um, for instance, the Battered Women's Legal Advocacy Project is another project that's located in Minneapolis. Um, every year, for instance, um, right now, they're doing this time of year, they do trainings for um, shelter programs and oh. for legal advocacy programs to let them know what the wow. new laws are for right. immigration, for yeah. children's welfare, wow. um, what the new laws are. They, they, so and the that's police all... department too, if, if the woman calls the police, they yes. probably get the yes. so that they right can, then yeah. and hook them up yeah. right there. Right. That's um, wonderful. One of the other services that Sojourner does is it provides community education um, oh, to good. the community so that the community finds out about the schools, our do services. The schools know about it? Um, I go into schools and talk to them not only about domestic violence, which is important, um, but also about dating violence, which yes. is recently becoming <gasps> that is my biggest more um, well known. Yes, my biggest that, concern. Um, yeah, that, that dating is something that parents need to be able to talk to their children children about yes. in terms of safety. Amen. We talk to our children about drunk driving and about yeah. what to do if you're out with your friends right. and the person driving starts drinking. Right. You know, we know you can call right. me and I'll come but get you. But what about dates? But dating is another area where you're in a car with someone. You give up Jeez. a lot of, it takes a lot of trust. Your freedom. Yeah. And if there away. is a problem, um, you know, parents need to talk to kids about how to be safety, how to be safe. They need what to What age them. do you think they should start talking to them? Um, when they're 12, 13, you yeah, know, they me should. Too. <laughs> me too, I agree. They should, as soon as they start um, interacting with other kids yep. and being on their own, I mean, our, I we agree. want our kids to go out. You know, our kids oh, are sure, arrows that we send <laughs> yes, out into, yes. the, um, into the world. And oh, we, yes. <laughs> right. Well, and when we send our kids out on dates, let's face it, we're, we're not always no. knowing exactly what's going we on. Don't know, we I don't. mean, my parents didn't always know exactly <laughs> where I either. was. There are things I've never told my parents and never will. <laughs> Um, that happened when I was dating, and I'm sure my kids have their own yeah. secrets. Yeah, and sure. um, you know, so it's important for kids to know that even beyond their parents, that there are teachers they can call, or that they can call our hotline and at two o'clock in the morning. Calling. And it's yeah. an anonymous call. We don't have caller ID. We won't call oh, you good. back. You don't have to give your name, but you can call, and That's someone wonderful. can talk to you about what your questions are what your concerns are. Right. Um, Liz Claiborne has um, recently, oh. you know, Liz Claiborne, the designer. Yes. She was very instrumental in starting um, websites and information about, it's called, um, on a website, loveisnotabuse.com. And oh, um, there's great. also chooserespect.org, which are oh, both wow. websites that teenagers can go to and get information oh, about really? dating violence, dating safety, healthy relationships well, versus here, un unhealthy <laughs> relationships, and being able to recognize red flags. Yes. That, I mean, it's, it's very flattering when you first start dating someone if they're very attentive and they're very jealous. Yes, and, and um, you know, that gets old real fast yeah. when they start calling you 20 times a day and they expect you to be <laughs> available and they expect you to be picking up <laughs> and they expect you to answer right. every text. Yes. And, and then there is online safety and there is stalking that occurs oh when people break God. up oh, or yeah. even when people don't break up. Sometimes teenagers online, it can be very dangerous. Very. So they need to know how to keep themselves safe when they're online. It's a wonderful service that you their have Their parents there. need to know how to wow. monitor their safety and to make right. sure because kids are kids and they don't always have the capacity to make no. wise decisions, to make safe decisions. That thing that meets in their head. What is that? Uh, oh, that, yeah, that? Yeah, that little... A li little uh, I know what you're talking it's about. It's a little I, thing that says, oh, gee, if you do this, this is going to happen. Well, it, and they don't have the experience. They, and let's well, face it, our culture does not give kids healthy relationships um, as a <laughs> model. They don't. Um, outside of their families, let's hope their families are, are good models. But outside of that, 
what do movies tell us? What does oh, advertising Lord. tell us? What Today does pop culture tell us? Right. Um, and the music that they're listening to. Right. The right. games they're playing. And what what is the message about men and women and respect and respectful relationships? Oh, sexual orientation. And nowadays. so well and and respectful intimacy. 